Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And today, I'm going to be doing a multiple speed light shoot in my small home studio. I've got one, two, three flash point speed lights. I've got some rogue flash bender adapters. What I'd like to do is to make a portrait that looks like it was lit at nighttime by moonlight. And to achieve that, I'm going to need to use all three speed lights at the same time, which means things could go wrong. So I'll show you how not to do it, and then I'll show you how to do it all over again, just a little bit better. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Sam. Now, normally Sam is backstage with the headphones monitoring the audio and a bunch of other things, but today she's gonna to be swapping the headphones for this rather amazing spear. Yeah, that's not scary at all, is it? So let's get our model ready. Let's get the light set. Let's get shooting. I've got all three of my speed lights here ready to go, and my plan is to set them up in one go. What could possibly go wrong? This is gonna be a background light. This is gonna be a hair light. And then I've got a third light over here, the key lights, the light that's gonna light Sam's face. Okay, let's see what we get. Here we go, Sam. Okay, whoa, yeah, that's not really, that's not really what I wanted. Pop that over into the, the corner a little bit more. Maybe that backlight is a little bit bright, or, uh, which I think is, is that one. So let's turn that one down. Oh no, wait a minute, that no, wasn't that light. No, not that light. Let's try this light. This isn't really working. Um, uh, okay, I'm not quite sure what to do now, to be honest. Okay, stop, rewind, go right back to the beginning. That was a complete mess and totally avoidable if I'd have slowed down and started with the exposure. So I'm gonna decide on an aperture. I wanna go wide open for this lens, that's f2.8. I'm gonna go with my flash sync speed, which for my Olympus camera is 250th of a second, but yours might be slightly different. And then ISO, my camera's native ISO is 200. Now, those are starting settings. I may have to change at least the ISO as we go through. Now, what we're gonna do is take perhaps the most important picture of the entire session. So let's get Sam back in. What I actually need to know is how much of the room lights are gonna affect my exposure. And the easiest way to do that is to turn the flash off and take a picture at the settings I've just dialed in. And even though the speed lights didn't fire, I can still see Sam, which means if I didn't do anything, I would be accidentally mixing both flashlight and ambient light. I'm actually gonna change my ISO. And this time, no flash is basically no photo. This is a really useful thing to have in the studio. Bit of tape, red pen. I've made a little cross out of the tape and I'm gonna put it here on the floor. This is gonna be the point for Sam to stand on and also means that if I set my lights correctly here and Sam is stood here, I know that nothing's going to change. It also means that I can get a little bit of tape like this and pop it onto my lights like that and actually label these up. So this is gonna be the front light, the key light. We're gonna make that light A. All of my lights are set up again, ready to go, but I'm not gonna turn them all on together. That's a huge mistake. Start with one light, work that light out, and then go from there. So, of course, I'm gonna start with light A. So I've got it set here, which is roughly where I think it's the right position, and I've got it set to whatever power it ended up on. Let's have a little look. Uh, one eighth power. Here we go, Sam. I'll just take a shot. And of all three lights, remember only one is working. So what I'm seeing now is the result from just the key light, light A. And that's okay, but it's not particularly dramatic. And this light is also lighting the background. Now, in a minute, I'm gonna add some smoke. And for really good smoke photography, you want a nice dark background. That light is also contaminating the background. So it's not really doing the job I want. Let's just move it a little bit like that. That looks better. Less light on the background, more dramatic light on Sam. Let's add in another light, but I'm not just gonna leave this light on, I'm actually gonna turn it off. Now I could physically do it on the flash itself, but I'm actually gonna do it from the remote control here and just turn it off. And then I'm gonna turn on, well, that one is light B. I've put a sticker on it so I know which one it is. Let's see how this looks. So this is just the hair light, the separation light. And that does give me some rim lighting, some hair lighting on Sam, but it's also catching the back of the background there as well, which again, isn't something I'm looking for in this shot. So what I've done is added in a little flag just to block the light so it doesn't sort of spill onto the background quite so much. 
Again, had I not done this one light at a time, I wouldn't have known that that's the result from that flash. And that's great. That gives me a nice little separation light on Sam. So that leaves me one more light to set up. It's the C light, it's the one right behind Sam. I'll turn off light B, so I don't get any interference with that one. Turn on light C, <sighs> 1 16th power. Okay, let's give this a try. Let's see what it's doing. And that light is adding a fantastic halo all the way around her. So those are my three lights independently. It's really important just to see how they all look together. So let me just switch all three of them on and see how they all look working in unison. And that looks really good. I like that. We've got nice dramatic lighting on Sam. To create the moonlit look, I've just dialed in a white balance of 4000K, a very blue white balance. That should take our warm, correctly lit shot and make it still correctly lit, but look a little bit cold. However, when I do that, the lighting on Sam doesn't look quite right, so I'm going to add one extra touch to my key light. By adding a chocolate coloured gel to that light, it's going to change the colour on Sam, but it's also going to change the results. So if you change anything on your setup, what you need to do, start again. Switch off the other lights. So I'll switch off B and I'll switch off C and I'll just leave A. Because if you try and change one thing whilst all of your other lights are on, you'll find yourself going round and round in circles. Break it down one light at a time. OK, Sam, here we go. So this is just the light on Sam from the key light and clearly now with the gel it's way too dark. So I could adjust the power or I could just get my flash meter and just take a meter reading from Sam here. And then I just have to adjust the flash power until it matches my camera at f2.8. Okay, let's try that. And that looks great. Just the right amount of light on Sam. And with all the speed lights turned on and firing, we've got nice rim lighting around Sam, we've got a little bit of hair light on the left hand side of this shot, and some warm and cold colours. All we need now to complete this is some smoke. So you ready? Okay, let's get the smoke machine warmed up. Most of the hard work has already been done, but there's always a bit of room for improvement in Photoshop. So I've gone to my website, downloaded the free Snow Flurry Action. You'll find a link for that in the description below. And I'm running the light snow flurry effect, which applies a bit of snow or maybe it's particles. It just adds a nice sort of outdoor effect to the image. I want to take a bit of control here, so I'm going to remove the snow from in front of Sam's face by using a layer mask. So layer, layer mask, reveal all. Then make sure I have a paintbrush with black as my foreground colour. Paint across Sam's face and then randomly elsewhere to remove the snow. And then I'm going to repeat that process on the other two layers of snow. Again, keeping it nice and random. The snow itself is a little bit too white in colour, so I'll go in nice and close and apply an adjustment layer. So this is going to be a hue saturation adjustment layer. Click on the colourize box and then click on the clipping box so it only affects the layer directly below. And I'm going to choose a bluish colour that looks and feels roughly right. There's no science to this, just so it looks about right. Once that's done, I need to repeat that for the other two snow layers. So I'll hold the Alt or the Option key and drag my hue saturation adjustment layer to the snow layer below. Then hold the Alt key, click between the two layers so it clips it onto the layer below and doesn't affect the rest of the picture. And there it is. There's my final picture completed. 
The key to working with multiple flashes, particularly speed lights that don't have a modeling lamp, is always to break it down and do one light at a time. It might feel like you're going forward slowly, but trust me, you'll get where you want to be much quicker. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment below. Click on the bell icon so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And we have new content pretty much every single day. And of course, remember to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.